On June 14, 2017, police came to this area off of East Ordnance Road in Glen Burnie responding to reports of human remains. They found a skeleton but were only able to determine it was a woman approximately 20 years old. Who was she? The key to unlocking the mystery came from a small, unassuming business inside this Northern Virginia office building. Parabon Nano Labs began as a computer software company. It has evolved into an investigative game changer for law enforcement when they have no idea who a victim or a killer is, but they have their DNA. Those DNA molecules encode all of the information about how to build a human. Your program, if you will, is in your DNA. All Parabon needs is a minute bit of DNA to generate an abundance of information about someone using technology they call snapshot. We can use as little as one nanogram. That's the billionth the mass of a penny, less than that even. So this is an incredibly small amount of DNA can be used. Snapshot is just reverse engineering that, pulling out the information that codes for eye color, hair color, skin color, and so on. This is the snapshot composite sketch of the woman whose remains were found in Glen Burnie. This is a photo of Shaquana Caldwell, a 26-year-old woman reported missing from the Brooklyn area of Baltimore City. The likeness is remarkable. Dental records provided by Caldwell's family matched the mystery solved. And it's like a genetic witness. Dr. Ellen Graytack is the director of bioinformatics at Parabon. So we predict the three-dimensional face shape of the person. You know, do they have a wider jaw or a turned up nose or you know bigger eyes, things like that. We put that together with the predicted pigmentation. So we put on skin that matches what we predict. And then we have a forensic artist who actually puts on irises that are the color we predict puts on hair, that's the color we predict, and all of that comes together into a composite. Painting an image of a victim or suspect. So this is a composite of you? Based on my DNA, yes. What do you think about it? I think it's pretty good. It's a good description of me. It's not my driver's license photograph, but you could certainly eliminate the vast majority of people from your suspect list. Coupled with snapshot technology, Parabon uses genetic genealogy to track down suspects, uploading data from the crime scene, to public genetic genealogy site GEDmatch, the only genealogy site which allows law enforcement usage. All GEDmatch participants, a million people and counting, have agreed to allow law enforcement to compare their DNA with DNA that may be found at a crime scene. Expert genealogists can take any matches and meticulously trace them back through a family tree to eventually pinpoint a suspect. And boy, has it been solving crimes. And we've already had about a dozen solved cases and these are many of these are cases that have been cold for decades. We're finding that in basically over 50 percent of the cases that come our direction we're finding matches that are workable. In other words over half of the cases now have some light when previously everything else was was darkness. Do you think there will come a time when you just can't get away with a crime? <laughs> I mean that begs the question you know. I think that's, that's taking it a bit far, but certainly uh, with, with DNA evidence, it's very difficult not to leave DNA behind. And as the DNA forensic tools improve, you're certainly making it more challenging to get away with crime. As for Shaquana's killer, police quickly zeroed in on her boyfriend, Terrace Caldwell, and they say he confessed. He is currently awaiting trial. I mean, it's, of course, nothing can ever bring back their loved one, can never change what happened, but at least they don't have to go to bed every night wondering who did this. Mindy Becerra, WBIL TV 11 News. Now, late this afternoon, we were notified by Admiral County Police that tomorrow they will announce another cold case homicide arrest using Parabon Nanolabs technology. And we'll bring that to you on 11 News at 5 and also on the WBIL TV mobile app.